Good morning, everyone. My name is Angie Clark, and I'm going to be talking to you today about mobilizing Gen Z for missions. Now, I have been working in this area of ministry with UPCI for a, four and a half years, and I'm really excited to talk about this with you today. Hopefully, by the end of what I have to say, you're going to see that there is a need to mobilize uh, Gen Z or the next oncoming generation. And there's even one after that. Hopefully I'll be able to help kind of recruit you to be a part of this process. And I also want to inform you and let you know what's going on as a way that we're mobilizing this particular generation. So first of all, what I'd like to do is I'd like to go ahead and define what I mean by mobilizing and also define what I mean by who is Gen Z? And once that's finished, I'd kind of like to do some vision casting, uh, maybe give you guys some information about uh, what kind of research uh, we've done and kind of some of the result results that we're finding. Just hang around here for a little bit and hopefully you'll have some great information to take away from this. So the first thing I'd like to do is define the word mobilize. For me and for us here, the definition would be that the goal of missions mobilization is to let others see the need for missions and to share what we know of God's heart for the nations. And in addition to that, then to provide a pathway to get people to those who are unreached who need the gospel. At its core, mobilization is about helping people find and take the next right step to fulfill God's plan for their life. So in a nutshell, we're just trying to connect people to the harvest. We're trying to get them where they are called to be, where they need to be, where they want to be in service for the Lord. We in Global Missions are mobilizing Gen Zers by partnering with our missionaries, with local churches, with linked ministries. And we're going to talk about what these things are. And then once we've partnered with these three entities, then we try to connect those who are interested or have a call to missions to actually go or to support it in some way. It's trying to get the whole gospel to the whole world by the whole church. Uh, that's what mobilization is about. Even my doing this video right now has to do with mobilization. I want to get you or people that you may have influence over or access to involved in missions, especially if they have a calling towards it, and especially in regard to Gen Z, which is what we're going to be talking about next. Who is Gen Z? What do I mean by Gen Z? Let's talk about who they are. Uh, Gen Z are uh, those who were born from 1999 to 2015. Now, this is according to Barna Research Group. When you look online or you should, you know, if you Google Gen Z, you're going to get a few different answers, but most of them are going to have some overlap and crossover. We've chosen to kind of lean into the Barna Group's research because it's, it's actually been very helpful to us as we plot a course for the future. That's who we're gonna be using just so that you know where we're getting our information from. Gen Z are those who are entering first grade up through those who are finishing university. So from six years old to about 22 um, as of 2021 this year. Now, in contrast, let me go over what the other generations are, and you'll see that there's a top end and a low end of each generation, and they have, they're going to share some, some characteristics. Millennials were born from 1984 84 through 1999, Gen X, uh, 1965 to 1983, uh, Boomers, 1946 through 1964, and our elders are anyone born from 1945 or earlier. So those who are about 75 years old or so, we would call those elders. Those a little bit younger, uh, we would call those boomers. Those in my generation, mid fifties or so, those are Gen X. Millennials are those who are, they're now starting to be late twenties, early thirties on up into late thirties is who the millennials are. And then we have this new generation coming on the scene, uh, Gen Z. And we actually have a generation that's been identified Behind that, those who are in kindergarten and preschool, they're called Gen Alpha, and they are different even from Gen Z. So trying to keep up with all of this, it's, you know, we can't go on autopilot with missions. Uh, we have to stay up with 
uh, what the generations need and what they're doing, and not just the generation that's coming on the scene, but the generation that supports missions, the generation that encourages people to, to go on missions. So we have to be informed in global missions about all this stuff. What I'd like to do now is I want to talk a little bit about the characteristics of Gen Z. Hopefully, if you've worked with any of these six-year-olds, they're 22-year-olds, maybe you're a youth minister or maybe a pastor of a church, and you've seen young people and how they're a little different from years gone by, hopefully some of these areas will help you identify some of their characteristics. There's three main characteristics I'll go over with you. The first is uh, they're, they're very in tune with their well-being. The second thing is they've, there's a term that's been developed for them called screenagers, even though some of them are in their early 20s. And then there's an area that, of course, that we want to talk about that has to do with their faith, has to do with uh, their worldview, especially concerning things to do with the church. So I'm going to cover those three areas real briefly with a few points each. The first is concerning their well-being. They're very in tune with that. Uh, they're, they, they think that their mental health is a very important thing to consider. And maybe past generations have kind of, you know, just pushed that off to the side but this generation takes it seriously. And so they're more apt to seek help. They're more apt to ask questions. They're more apt to kind of compare uh, how their life is going with how they want it to be going. And they tend to have pretty good boundaries between work and life. And in the church, you'll find that they tend to have pretty good boundaries between ministry and life. And they're not afraid to say no if they feel that something's getting out of balance. So that's an important thing for us to keep in mind as well. Another really key point about this particular generation is they are very sure that they are going to be successful. They have no doubts about that in general as a generation. Um, so if you have a, a young person who maybe that's not true about them, uh, I'm speaking about them as a group, okay? They believe that success is achievement. If you're going to be successful, it means you need to achieve something. And they want to achieve something now. <laughs> they, want, they don't want to wait. They, they want to get it all done now. And the more things that they can rack up as achievements, the more of a success they tend to feel as a group. It's just important to know that success to them is achieving. And we know that's not necessarily the definition of success. There's a better definition and I'll share it with you later, but um, this really does have a, a big impact on this particular age group. So the second thing is the term screenagers was coined because um, they spend a lot of time on devices, whether it's a laptop, a tablet, or a phone of some kind. They are aware that they spend a lot of time. It's not like they're clueless. But the interesting thing is only about one out of 10, according to Barna, are discerning of what they see on the screen. What this means is they'll watch anything and they don't understand how it impacts spiritual development or how it hinders it, how it could help it they are not discerning about what they see. They just consume it all. And so uh, we see that this type of mentality, while they're aware, they don't understand the impact. They need to be taught what the impact is. The number one thing about this, and this is really key, and this is pretty much a quote from Barna, is the formation of their worldview is not by the church. It's not necessarily by their family. It's about what they see on a screen. So that little blue glowing rectangle has a lot of influence over this particular generation. The last area that I'll talk about briefly here is faith. So a really key thing about this particular group that's, it's, it was happening in millennials, but they, they really believe and they understand from their perspective that morality changes over time due to priorities of a society that shift. The idea of absolutes started slipping with millennials and it's practically gone uh, with Gen Z. A really cool thing about this group though is instead of pushing against the older generation that's ahead of them, they actually enjoy spending time with that generation. They like to have conversations, they like to ask questions, they like to be heard. So uh, spending time with them is like two thumbs up as much as they like the older generations, 
they do enjoy spending a lot of time with their peers, their peers and their phones. So there is a thing that we're doing in missions to kind of honor this and hopefully an approach that will work with them. I'll tell you about that in just a minute. So we find that strong faith comes from greater digital discernment, being careful of what they watch. It has to do with the condition of their mental health, how they feel about themselves and how they are processing things in the world around them really has an impact on their faith. And then th whether or not they're engaged in an intergenerational community. So these are really important things for them to have strong faith. This particular generation needs these kinds of things. Kind of what I'd like to do now, now that we kind of have an idea of who I'm talking about and kind of what I mean by mobilization. So let's talk now for a little bit on casting the vision of what does missions mobilization look like and, and how are we going about doing some of this? I will tell you straight up uh, from this moment on whatever I say that at the bottom line is global missions cannot mobilize this entire generation on our own. We have social media that we can reach them with, but a lot of this mobilizing, it has to come from somewhere else before we can continue it on. So I just wanna make sure that I, whatever I say of all the things we're trying to do, that this is, uh, it's like somebody mentioned this morning, it's like it takes a village, it takes a whole church um, to foster um, missions mobilization. Let's talk a little bit about how are we doing the mobilization piece? So first of all, uh, missionaries on deputation are basically our boots on the ground and they showcase missions in the local church, which is awesome. And we are so glad that they get to deputize and do that. One of the trends that we've seen in missions lately, I've heard a good bit about this, is when our missionaries go into local churches, they've noticed that the young people and the children are pulled out of the service to such an extent that it's very common that the young people and children uh, do not have a chance to even know the missionaries there or to meet the missionary or to hear any missionary stories or anything like this. So the idea is that um, our missionaries would kind of be a promoting force that would help to kind of get missions out there, let it become a familiar concept with those in the congregation and they're not hitting Gen Z and below. They are only getting maybe the adults. Try to see if there's some way that you can engage that younger generation because we really need that exposure and they need that exposure to know this is an option for them. A lot of times kids might be called to missions, but they don't see what that looks like. And so they have so many fears and so many questions that are never addressed, never asked, never answered, that they turn away and they don't follow that particular calling in their life. If you can help us with that, that would be awesome. Uh, when a missionary comes, if it if it's going to fit in your in your church group, just have an intergenerational meeting. Let that opportunity for that missionary to bring exposure to your kids and youth about missions would be awesome. The second thing is it has to do with this generation's um, definition of success. So in general, if success is defined by achievement by Gen Z, then how will your church work to redefine success as service that brings God glory? So that's one of the core things um, with this group is their idea of success being not necessarily biblical. It is something cultural, okay? So how do we rein that back in to get it in the realm of biblical worldview? Achievement, to be honest, it may well be a byproduct of service with excellence or something, but it doesn't, it's not the only definition of success. I think it's really, really important to help them redefine success from a biblical perspective, because when that key component is in place, then it makes answering the call of God a little bit easier when answering the call means you're not going to drive the newest kind of car, you're not going to have the most awesome home, maybe you're, you're not going to be, you know, spending your money in a certain way, you're going to be investing it differently. So with different definition of success, they're going to have different priorities that are more in line with our biblical teaching. So now back onto global missions, what are we doing to engage youth? One of the things that we've created is a curriculum and it's found on link 247. It's a website 
And this particular curriculum is entitled Missions Mandate. It is a four week course that includes information about prayer, giving, preparing, going, and uh, giving this tool to the next generation will help them become goer. There is actually a curriculum out there that will introduce young people who maybe haven't heard of missions before in a, a teaching environment, what is available, what options are there, and then some biblical background and worldview about why it matters. Another part of what we do is we are reaching down into the younger demographic, into those I don't know, I guess maybe six through 12 year olds with something called Go Next Kids. This is a short one day seminar, starts in the morning, finishes in the afternoon. In this particular type of seminar, there are missions related things for kids and all kinds of stuff. It's, it's packed. And if you'd like to know more, we've done one in O'Fallon, Missouri. We've done one major one at the Illinois Kids Camp, and we've already seen some fruit from that. So it's like real exciting. But if you're interested in booking something like this for your church, your, your section, or your district, please email gmstm at upci.org for more info. And I'll be the one answering that. And I can get you set up with something if you're interested in that. All right. The other thing that we do now for grownups is something called Global Connections Weekend, or we also do Go Next seminars. Now, there is no age requirement on this. And we host our weekend event. It's like a Thursday night, all day Friday and Saturday morning. And we do it on opposite years from NAYC. So every even year, so 2016, 2018, 2020, 2022, coming up, uh, we'll be doing uh, Global Connections here in St. Louis, November 3 through 5. And at this particular event, they call it the NAYC of Missions. Uh, that's kind of the nickname that it's been given. But we have uh, hundreds of people that come together to find out what's going on in missions, to, to go through missions experiences. We have prayer for the nations. We have speakers that really encourage and challenge and bless us so much. So it's a really great thing. Check our social media for when we start ramping up for that. Um, get, a, get connected with us to find out more. All right. We also have programs that begin for those who are age 18 and above, such as our Next Steps program, our AIM program, and our AMP program. You can find more about these programs by going to gmstm.net. And we also have something called the Go Center, which is for those who are looking to be involved in these programs. You can find out what kind of opportunities are available. And uh, it's a really great place. You can check it out online. If you have any questions, we have a missions coach that can help people get through this. So we're really, really trying to ramp up so that we can uh, mobilize this generation to go have their success stories on the field. So we're just really excited about that. The biggest obstacle for young people to go, they're telling us, is because of the uncertainty brought on because of COVID. Navigating the timing and taking that next right step for them during this time it's going to be very daunting as we come around them to offer them that support. It's a blessing to them to help them navigate this difficult time. A while ago, I mentioned that they get along great with those who are, who are older than them, but they do enjoy spending time with their peers. So because of this, we are encouraging, um, and there is a resurgence of the idea of teams in global missions, especially to help open up new areas to the gospel. Now, I will be the first to admit this is not a new concept. Uh, many missionaries who pioneered new works in the 1800s would return home and kind of raise up teams to take back to the field with them. And it's kind of come and gone since then. In the 1960s, there was a movement of teams. It was a thing. And now we're seeing it happening again. And teams is making a roaring comeback. And it's the perfect generation mashup for this to work. We're really excited about that. Some of these um, teams can be seen either on the Go Center or by connecting with our missions coach. So we're trying to use these areas of the team to kind of build upon what the strengths are of this generation. Quick thing here, unlike millennials who inherited digital services, uh, Gen Zers are screen literate and they're digital natives. This means they cut their teeth on digital stuff. I mean, cell phones, I mean, the little two-year-olds, you know, can operate 
phones and uh, equipment and things pretty fast. So they just grew up with this. As a result, uh, we are diving into the digital space, like head headlong right into it. And we have a short-term missions YouTube channel, and we have a UPCI global missions app that's designed for Apple TV, Roku, handheld devices. And we're ramping up our developing of online content, especially to promote opportunities that will engage this generation in shaping their worldview. And then also trying to give them content that will assist them in finding direction for their life. We understand that if we don't speak through their screens, they will listen to other voices who do. We're making that transition and hopefully this transition will help to mobilize this particular generation. When Gen Zers join our community, sometimes called our tribe, we are making it a point to listen to what they have to say. And we're learning to do that first. Before we tell them all the things about missions, we want to hear what's on their heart, what they have to say. Um, They have so many questions that if we don't listen carefully first, we'll miss so much. And we're very keen to allow them to express their ideas so they know they're being understood. And then when they know they're understood and we allow them that space, what we've seen is they can be led well. They'll follow. This is just a thing that we're trying to do in our training, things that we do in sessions that we have. We try to listen as much as possible. And if they're quiet, we'll fill the space. But we do try to offer that to them first. Uh, We are networked to linked ministries that facilitate those who are younger. So, for example, AYC, the Apostolic Youth Corps, age 14, I believe it is, is the youngest now that can be involved in North American trips. And then CSI, Compassion Services International, depending on the person, they can be as young as 16 and be involved with some of their programs. Additionally, programs such as Mission Possible, uh, they allow for investments, small investments incrementally for a person who, when the time comes and they want to take a trip or they want to do something ministry related, those funds can actually be transferred directly to the ministry on their behalf. This saves taxes and it saves all kinds of things. It's really a great program. And it's a great way to invest in a child's future starting when they're quite young. So for five bucks a week for X amount of years, an entire AYC trip could be paid for without it really being any fundraising at the end of the day. So there are some great programs that we're linked to. They're incredible. You can find those things on our website, GMSTM. Uh, Just want to say a quick thing before I go here. We are interested in doing research as our missionaries go into churches. We are trying to find out some things. And one of the interesting things we found out is that there is a, it seems on the face of it, a disparity between the involvement of guys and gals in mission. A lot of our stuff, a lot of pictures and things you'll see, oh, there's a lot of girls. I guess it's not things that guys do. Well, when we started looking a little deeper, we're discovering that in a lot of our churches, A lot of those who are still in the church in their teenage and uh, college years, they tend to be female. And in fact, even personally myself, uh, recently in a Sunday school environment, I started looking at my the the class I was in, and uh, there were three times as many girls as there were guys. So obviously, when they grow up, those things are going to translate into who is going to the field. So we will take whoever God qualifies. Those are just some things that we take a look at when it comes to mobilizing Gen Z. Now, if we were in a live environment, I would be taking questions and trying to answer some of the questions you might have. So if you have any after this, please don't hesitate to email gmstm at upci.org with any questions that you have about how we're going about mobilizing this generation. And if you're interested or you want to find out more about any of the other programs that we have, please use that email address and let us be in touch with you. Thank you so much for your time. Hopefully this has given you an idea of what all we're trying to do, how we're trying to do it, and that the, the truth is we need your help. They're a generation that will go and that's the, that's the really cool thing about them. They're not going to put it off on someone else. They're going to go. They just need to be able to get through those barriers and have the support they need. God bless you and thank you in advance for the way we know you're going to help mobilize this generation for missions.